Montana now for a little over seven years. And uh, what a privilege it is to be a part of today's open house and today's celebration of this transition at the Flathead Lake Biological Station. It's just amazing to me that people over a hundred years ago had the vision and the foresight to start the Flathead Lake Biological Station and to conduct research and education and outreach around the concept of uh, lake ecology uh, before that word was invented, I'm sure, and uh, to, uh, to have this tradition of 100 years of service of Flathead Lake Biological Station is something that uh, really no other university has that kind of a tradition. And so we're so proud of the, of the station here and proud to be a part of it. You know, everybody has their window to the University of Montana and long before I ever dreamed that I would be coming to Montana, my window to the university was, in fact, the Flathead Lake Biological Station. It was the first thing I knew about the University of Montana because I came here to a meeting, uh, gosh, 15, 18 years ago or so now. Jack Stanford hosted a national group uh, of uh, research officers and people who were trying to build research infrastructure at their universities. Jack had us all out here staying in the unheated uh, cabins in <laughs> late October, um, but it was a wonderful event and that was the first exposure I had to the university and to Jack. Um, and so right away I could see at that point that this was a unique facility. And so um, when Jack announced not too long ago that he was going to step down as director, we said okay, let, we have to start the search process and so uh, we asked uh, Ken Dial, who is here in the audience. Ken, we're right, uh, right here. Uh, he's another one of our esteemed uh, faculty members at the university in ornithology. And so we asked uh, Ken to chair the search committee. And he and his uh, colleagues came in and said to me, what you need to do, uh, Ingstrom, is bring in some outside people to let you know what an important facility this is. And so they put together a team of three people who came in, uh, station directors themselves in their own right, and they confirmed to me what I thought I knew, that we had the premier freshwater uh, station in the country, and perhaps in the world, right here at the University of Montana. And uh, so that was very gratifying to hear that, and so that launched us then into this uh, search process, um, and knowing how difficult it is to replace an icon like Jack Stanford, uh, 44 years at this biological station, he just told me, um, would be a, a big, big challenge. But I'm so glad uh, that we succeeded in every aspect of that by bringing in Jim Elser from Arizona State University. And so you're going to get an introduction to both of those folks here in just a moment. When I had uh, a few weeks ago the opportunity to speak to a group of 540 people from around the Pacific Northwest at a conference over at Big Sky, I used uh, three examples of the University of Mon from the University of Montana that I said, this, these are examples where we play on the world stage, and in fact, we lead on the world stage. And one of those examples was the Flathead Lake Biological Station. Jack and his colleagues, uh, Bonnie Ellis in particular, have developed probably the best ecological ecological record of a freshwater system that exists right here at Flathead Lake. And so to have this natural laboratory uh, available to us and to have the caliber of people, Jack and all of the colleagues uh, that have worked here at the station over the years, uh, who work here now, uh, they are outstanding scientists and they have international reputations. But they're also outstanding citizens. And I think a lot of the folks that are here in the room are here because they've been exposed to the work of the station uh, because you live here or you summer here or you have some interaction with the lake. And so to have research scientists who have the caliber of the folks that are here also interested in bringing to the public the message about the importance of this lake and about freshwater biology in general is a true combination and we're so proud of, uh, of the folks that do that. So I'm very proud to be a part of today's celebration, and I want to thank all of you for coming uh, and celebrating Jack's tenure here and uh, introducing and meeting uh, Jim's, uh, uh, Jim Elser as he begins his work here as well. 
So, folks, we have a world-class facility here, and uh, thank you for being a part of it. excited about this. Um, we're announcing a transition from me as director of the biological station to an eminent colleague, a very well-known scientist, Jim Elser. You'll have some words here in a minute, and his wife, Monica, right here. I hope you've all met them. We have some VIPs here with us to talk a little bit about the past and a little bit, I hope, about the future. Uh, we'll introduce them in a minute, but um, I first want to say just, uh, just very seriously and, and with great <clears throat> appreciation that what we've done here over these many years has rest squarely on the shoulders of the many people who have worked here at this field station, and a lot of them are in this room. It's not so much about me, it's about all of the fine people that work with me. And uh, we have worked together, most of us, for many years, and that's, that's something that I cherish more than anything. Uh, so, the other thing I wanted to say is just that uh, I will retire officially on May 31st, and we'll probably have some sort of party uh, around then. <laughs> this is a transition, this is a transition from me to Jim, and Jim and I will work together over the next few months to make it as seamless as possible and as productive as possible. So that's that's really why we're why we're here today. Now I want to I want to also say that we're here because of the contributions that many people around Flathead Lake have made to this field station in lots of different ways, from small donations to work in kind to really big uh, things that have done great things to make this laboratory what it is. So I thank all of you that are in the room that know who you are that have, have done that. But I want to acknowledge right now Greg from Explorer Maps to come up and uh, he's had a project with us that's been quite productive and produced this wonderful map about Flathead Lake and uh, has, a, has something for us, I guess. So we do. Greg? And Jack Robin from the Lakers. Robin from the Lakers. Lakers, of course. We have to have the Lakers. <laughs> Okay, thanks very much, Jack. We'll just take a minute. Uh, Greg Robitaille with Explorer Maps. My brother Chris and I uh, create fine art hand-drawn maps, and we partner and collaborate with different uh, historic and conservation organizations around the world. And uh, almost exactly three years ago, um, Explorer Maps and uh, Flathead Lake Biological Station and the Lakers got together, and Tom Bansack and Robin Steinkraus and myself uh, collaborated for about six months to produce what we hope uh, is a product that um, connects people in place, and this real special place right outside that door. Um, and we have, over the last three years, um, together raised a fair bit of money for the bio station and the Lakers. And this weekend, we managed to sell the original artwork uh, at the Big Ford Festival of the Arts of which $2,500 of that sale is split between the BioStation and the Lakers. And in addition, uh, additional revenues from our art festival this weekend. So today we're, we're here to present a check for $3,500 to both the BioStation and Flathead Lakers, which brings our contribution in three years to a little more than $16,000. So, Just to finish, I just want to reiterate what Jack said. Tom and Robin and everyone here that has supported the project, buying the limited edition uh, signed and numbered prints, and just supporting everything that we've done to help support these organizations, I just want to thank you guys very much. It's super appreciated, and we're pleased and honored to be a small part of this here today. Thanks a lot, Greg. You're welcome. Get them. Now the big check. This is the big check. check. I've ever seen. <laughs>
one for you guys. <laughs> I, have, I have ones that the bank will actually take somewhere. <laughs> so you're welcome. Thank you both Thanks. very much. Thank you. Thank you. An example of how the community interacts with the biological station and I have to say that the Lakers are our partners in outreach and always have been since the very beginning and we appreciate the Lake uh, flatted Lakers very much and uh, I will be giving a talk at the Lakers annual meeting this year which is going to be retrospective of the years of working on flatted Lake so now <clears throat> I also have uh, another gift that has come in from the station to the station to announce uh, Charles and Nancy Goldman Charles is right here I don't know where Nancy is she must be close by yeah and are have made a donation to the biological station to establish the James Elser inaugural inaugural scholarship <laughs> recognizing his exemplary and highly productive career so we're starting off on a really good note. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm very, very excited to pass this microphone on to my all longtime colleague and very good friend, James V. Ward, who's going to say a few words. I don't know what he's going to say, but uh, it should be interesting. James is a uh, retired uh, professor of limnology from the Swiss Institute of Technology in, in Zurich, Switzerland. And he and I worked together for many years on stream ecology studies and um, look forward to fishing with him a lot. <laughs> James? Well, it's a real pleasure being here, and in many ways, one of the most beautiful places on the planet, and the, maybe the finest biological station in the world. And Jack and I met in 1974 in a taxi cab at an International Lunology Congress in Winnipeg. And it, but it wasn't until a few year, three years later, the next Congress in Copenhagen, that we really seriously began to uh, work together on these things. And so we have a long history. Uh, we were both working on stream regulation at the time when we met. And at that meeting in Copenhagen, we decided, let's have the first international symposium on regulated streams. And that took place in 1979 and was very successful. The proceedings here uh, were published and uh, started really a, a new field of endeavor. And since that time, companion symposia, international symposia on regulated streams, have occurred every three years in places like Africa and China, Canada, different places in the United States, uh, where else, Africa, did I say that? Uh, Czech Republic, Norway, England, uh, every three years. So this, this really started a, a trend that was uh, very successful. And this started because Jack was able to get National Science Foundation money to bring in scientists from, for this first symposium, scientists from eight countries on four continents. And that resulted in that book and this whole thing. Then in 1987, Wiley of England, Publishers of England, started a journal on regulated rivers and it's been published ever since. So, so this was a nice, really a nice, uh, nice beginning. And so Jack and I have been colleagues for about 41 years. And we've collaborated in a lot of projects here in the Flathead and beyond. Uh, during my time in Switzerland, I nearly every year came here, every October, and worked together with Jack and fished with Jack. Uh, so I feel very qualified to comment on Professor Stanford's professional life. As you may know, he worked at the station since 1971, became its director in 1980. Uh, in a relatively short time, amazing short time, he raised the station to international prominence. He develops a state-of-the-art analytical facility, which is now much, even much better than it was in the beginning. Um, 
he started uh, developing funding uh, to conduct research at the very highest level. And he and his colleagues have rapidly obtained international recognition for their work in the Flathead ecosystem and, and really around the world. I'm really continually amazed by Professor Stanford's depth and breadth of knowledge. He and his colleagues have addressed and had major breakthroughs on a lot of subjects. And we put that one, I just want one visual up here to indicate that. It's such a long list that I had to, had to project it. And there it is. You know, they've made major contributions in everything from grizzly bears, brown water fauna, you know, you can read the, you read the list. It's rather impressive. Uh, and, you know, this isn't Jack's work alone, he, he and his colleagues, but he was involved in all of this, all of this work, and you, you can see that there's a fair amount of uh, competitive grant funding to support all of these different things. So we can just leave that up for the rest of it, my thought. Uh, so in addition to studying the, I guess I turned it off by mistake, <laughs> the Flathead Lake and River ecosystems and the ecosystems in Glacier National Park, Professor Stanford has conducted research around the world in Kamchatka, Russia, in Argentina, Norway, Alaska, and other locations in North America. He, he and his colleagues have, have received numerous awards at the national, local, international level. And here, there are just six examples that I'd like to uh, indicate to you. Now this one was with Dr. Ellis, the Conservationist of the Year Award from the Montana Environmental Inf Information Center. He received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the International Society of River Science, Award of Excellence from the Society for Freshwater Science, of course, he's a distinguished scholar at the University of Montana, as you know. He received the Gold Trout Award from Trout Unlimited uh, and the Jesse M. Beerman Distinguished Chair, of course, here that he occupied at the University of Montana. In addition to this, he's been invited to pr present plenary and keynote lectures around the world. But he's also established an international reputation as an, inter as an excellent fly fisherman <laughs> who is also at the same time an authority on salmonid evolution and ecology. So based on that dual expertise, this has meant that he's frequently invited to fish with the likes of Yvonne Chouinard, who is the owner of Patagonia, etc., uh, etc. Et so he's really in the, <laughs> up in the international fishing world as well. So in, in summary, Professor Stanford has really successfully conducted an extremely difficult juggling act. Teaching outreach and conservation initi initiatives at the local level, basic and applied research at local, national and international levels. He's procured grant funds at all, all of these levels, published books and papers on this diverse, diverse array of topics that we had projected. Men, of course, running one of the, you know, if not the top, one of the nation's top field stations, mentoring masters and PhD students. And last but not least, drinking fine wine, skiing treacherous slopes, <laughs> and pursuing bonefish, tarpon, and salmonids with a fly rod. <laughs> now this is going to be a difficult act to follow. <laughs> but in my opinion, uh, there's a, just a few people in the world who could do this, and I think we're lucky to have one of them in Professor Elser, and we wish him every, every success. And it also is my pleasure, a special pleasure today, to be able to introduce the next speaker, one of the world's top immunologists ever, Professor Charles Goldman. Jim to apply for the directorship of the Tahoe field station, and now I realize why. 
he was waiting for this job. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, I came west uh, in 1958, and a year later, uh, Jim was born. <laughs> in the east. <laughs> and uh, I was uh, fortunate to uh, attract him uh, to Davis as a graduate student. Uh, after, uh, in 1981, uh, he graduated summa cum laude. I never got close to summa cum laude as an undergraduate. And uh, at uh, Notre Dame, uh, three years later, in 83, he had a master's degree, and uh, by 1990, uh, he had a Ph.D. Uh, from the University of California at Davis. And uh, I must say, I learned a lot from Jim, and I want to pass on this to uh, future teachers that may be here. You can learn an awful lot from your students, and particularly really outstanding ones like, uh, like Jim. In fact, uh, Jim was so outstanding that in 1990, uh, I took him to uh, Russia uh, on an expedition. Yeah, I'm a roadkill on the information highway. <laughs>
we were always proud of him at uh, Davis. He's, he's had a uh, fabulous career. Uh, he's not only been to Norway, but he made such an impression in Norway that they voted him as a foreign member of the Norwegian Academy of Sciences, which is a high event. So with that, uh, I'll turn the uh, mic over to uh, Jim. Uh, it's hard for me to, you know, not give my 50-minute talk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Charles, that was possibly the shortest talk you've ever given. <laughs> Thank you for all the great uh, content in there. Thank you, everyone, uh, for coming today. It's a tremendous um, honor to be here today. I want to thank uh, President Engstrom for coming up and Vice President Wittenberg, who are here. Dean Collins is here. Um, Ken Dial from the Search Committee is here. Um, so very, very, much, very happy to see all of them again. Thank you to James Ward and Charles Goldman for taking time to their busy schedule to come here for this fun day. Um, and of course, I have to thank Jack Stanford and Bonnie Ellis for their hospitality, both this weekend and in previous visits that I've made. We've been having a great time every time that we've come. Um, I want to also thank the staff, the fabulous staff of the Flathead Lake Biological Station for the warm welcome and all the great questions they asked me during the early part of the process. <laughs> and, uh, and so really, um, as I've said before, one of the things that convinced me that this was a great opportunity to take was the clear, outstanding excellence of the staff and their commitment to the station. So um, it's not just that lake you have, and that is a nice lake. It's also the tremendous staff that, that, that has been built here. And again, thank you all for coming. I do want to introduce, um, I'm not coming by myself, so I'm coming along with Cody Youngbull. Cody, are you here? So Cody Youngbull is a Techno environmental technologist, and he is coming with some fabulous technology to get started here. So I, I hope everyone will welcome him to the Flathead community, and uh, he's bringing a company with him and a lot of great technology. And so he's a great. Uh, thank you for welcoming him. And Monica, you just stand up. Everyone can have a look. And my wife is also Monica. Also. <laughs> She will be getting a lot of uh, continuing the great education programs and expanding them into the community um, on behalf of, of the university. So um, what do I want to say about this? Well, the word for the day is daunting. <laughs> so uh, this job is daunting. And in some ways, it's kind of a little terrifying. It leaves you know, kind of lay awake at night and think about it. And then, kind of, then I became calm thinking about it. One reason it's daunting, of course, is the incredible record that Jack and Bonnie have put together for the decades they've been here. It is quite an act to follow, but that in fact is what makes it not daunting because there's such an incredible platform here already that is already in place that doesn't have to be built from scratch. It is beautiful, it is exciting, it is internationally renowned already. So that is a tremendous platform to build from. So that makes it not daunting. So that is a good thing. Um, why is it also not daunting? Well, it's not daunting because I think I have the support of the University of Montana community. And that was clear to me during the interview. The folks on campus are very excited about, um, about the station. And I know that I have the support of the president and the vice president Wittenberg as well. And, um, and I'm very happy to have that support that they've expressed. Uh, why is it also, it's also not daunting because the Flathead Lake Biological Station already has an outstanding staff in place who are talented and they're dedicated to the mission of the station and the university. And so that is a, a, another great uh, resource that's here. So we're going to build on that core staff. We're going to expand it and, in the coming years, and we'll be searching for two new Flathead Lake uh, faculty members during the coming year. And so that look forward to uh, fall of 2016. We'll hope to have those two new professors in place with uh, their exciting program and research to get going here. Um, as I've said, it's also not daunting because the Flathead Lake Biological Station already has an international reputation for research excellence. And so we're going to build on that reputation and we're going to try to expand its impact even further. So we're going to continue to bring the Flathead Lake Station research to the world by high level publication, by communication at, at international scientific meetings, all these discoveries 
uh, that we make that are not just about this important lake, but are broadly applicable to all kinds of similar situations to communicate that to the world about how lake and river ecosystems function, and they function to support human welfare. Um, so we're going to continue that. We're also going to bring the world to Flathead Lake. I'm going to do my best to bring researchers internationally or interested in similar questions and continue the process that Jack and Bonnie have already put in place, bringing the world's experts here to learn um, from the Flathead Lake Station faculty and students and for us to learn from them so that we have the very best science uh, and innovation going on here um, in the future as we have had in the past. Well, it's also not daunting, or so daunting, um, because Flathead Lake Station is already a, a leader in environmental monitoring and sensor technology for lakes and rivers. And there's some great work that's already been going on here. The buoys out in the lake, Mark Lorang's uh, technologies out in the rivers. So we're going to build on that as well. We're going to bring it, try to bring it to an even higher level, and that includes the efforts of Cody Youngbull, who I introduced you to, and his technologies. And so we're going to build on that and team up with others at the... Uh, Montana camp at the Missoula campus and elsewhere to bring things to a higher level. Um, it's also not that daunting to come here because in the education uh, scheme be uh, side of things because the station already has a strong core of courses that are well known for their quality and their impact. And but we are going to build on that foundation, and especially Monica will be leading the charge to build on that foundation to be able to offer the incredible experience of taking a course at the Flathead Station to more and more students, uh, both in Montana and beyond, to bring students from around the country and around the world here to experience the Flathead Lake um, education experience in the Montana environment. And so we're going to help build this next generation of limnologists and environmental scientists and others that are needed to confront all the challenges that are out there that face us in the future. Furthermore, we're going to try to get more into the community. We're going to work in, with uh, regional schools. We're going to be in the high schools uh, trying to get more students involved and have the Flathead presence expanded uh, in the community in our school system. And again, Monica will be leading the charge on that as well. So anyway, so it's going to be great and exciting for the young people uh, who grow up around this lake and in this catchment to learn more about what is out there in that lake and, and how does it work and then get them excited about science get them excited about technology, um, and, um, and that'll be good for the community and their futures. All right, so why is it, then finally, it's not, this is not that daunting to take on, because I know that the station has the support of the citizens of the state of Montana, and especially the citizens of this Flathead Lake watershed, as exemplified by all the folks who came here today, and others who, who would have come if they could. So um, this is really, really important, and so I can tell you that we're going to continue that partnership in the future and, um, and grow it even larger as best we can during the coming years. So the partnership of the community is very solid, and we're going to build and uh, strengthen that as best we can. So I'm just going to wrap up a little bit and say, uh, repeat something I said when I was asked by one of the, uh, during the job interview I came here, one of the staff members asked me why I wanted this job. He was, I was sitting in this room, and actually I just pointed out the window and, say, and said, look at that lake. <laughs> what do you want to shop? Look at that lake. I'm a limnologist. <laughs> look at that lake. Right? And so how could you not uh, be excited by a, a, the challenge of, of having the capacity to study an ecosystem as, as impressive and, and, uh, and exciting as that one? Um, so that's what I want to end with, is, is to urge you uh, also to look at that lake, and I know you do all the time, but when you look at it, I want you to see uh, below the surface and beyond the reflections at the surface, and you know, in your mind's eye, think about things like the physical currents and the turbulence that are moving around in that lake under the water. Think about the chemical transformations that are taking place in that water. Think about the microscopic, think about the organisms, easy to think about the fish, but think about the microscopic organisms, the plankton, the algae, bacteria, right, that are out there all making up that food web, and all of them working together in some way that keep that water clean and clear and the ecosystem healthy for all of us. So we're, so in your mind's eye, now that we've done that, I want you to also think not only about the lake, but to think about its catchment, because every lake 
is a mirror of its catchment. And think about that catchment and think about all of the things that go on in that catchment that determine the health of the entire ecosystem. All the decisions we make about land use and home building and forest management and what we do with our waste and what species we bring in or don't bring in in the future, all of those things that will affect the health of this ecosystem that we all uh, care about. And now that you've done that in your mind's eye, I want you to call to your attention that many of the things that you thought about there, we only know about them because of the work of generations of scientists who have discovered them, right? discovered them by hard, hard work uh, with their best efforts and communicated them uh, globally and locally uh, to all of us to understand the ecosystems that we live in. And to me that is, you know, one of the great um, accomplishments of science and accomplishments of places like the Flathead Lake Biological Station to make discoveries, to bring them to, to everyone's knowledge so that we can make wise decisions about the world we live in and make uh, and in, just enlighten our, our lives and our existence. So I, I do have a lot of enthusiasm, looking forward to this new adventure here, and I thank everyone for their warm welcome, and I uh, ask for your partnership and friendship in the coming years. Um, that's going to be very important for uh, our success here. And so what I would just say is together, let's look at the lake. <laughs> thank you very much. So Jim, to welcome you, we have a couple of gifts for you. First is one of the Explorer maps. Oh, I won't get lost. Um, <laughs> one of the wonderful Explorer maps, antique style of Latin Lake map. So right from the start, like you said, you won't get lost. Thanks, Tom. Next, I have a glass of Latin Lake fine zooplankton for you. <laughs> so right, right from please the start, explain. please explain. Right from the start, Latin Lake will literally be a part of you. All right, so I will ex I will explain that Tom is catching me up. I was interviewed by a reporter about the job, and she. She got me to admit that one of the initiation rites that we sometimes do, this was invented at Castle Lake, Charles, by the way, was that we take a zooplankton toe of uh, zooplankton and then we would drink them down in a nice shot of crustaceans. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I think, folks, that's, that's it. We're done for today. This is your guy. <laughs>